Morning everyone. We'd like to have a look at a file naming standard today, which in the new Autodesk Construction Cloud is based on the ISO 19650 standard. It's like that by default. It's quite simple to apply it to folders and subfolders. What you'll see over here is my sort of test project and there's a name over here which is named in a code deciphering this code we would have a look at the settings on the right hand side of the page and have a look at the naming standard the naming standard by default like I said is the ISO 19650 you can also edit this naming standard the name if you'd like to create your own you can only have one as far as I can see you can only have one per project unfortunately if you do <coughs> have some sort of library of components that you host on your platform then you wouldn't be able to apply a second naming standard for that library so you might just choose not to apply the naming standard to that folder and what you'll see is that there's a project, an originator. Those of us familiar with the British standard would understand this. The volume or system, or the zone as it is known, the level or the location, typically vertical, the type of file, that's also standard, also from the British protocol, the role of the file, architectural, which discipline is it from, and then a number, which is essentially a placeholder for sheets, which we use in... Um, Revit. Then there are related attributes. Now these used to be part of the file name. The status, which is the suitability code within the British standard, S0, S1 and so on. We've got the revision. Now that is open to interpretation but in Britain that would be P01, P02. In South Africa and other parts of the world we've got different revision protocols. And then the classification. So this is something that's new. It came in with the British standard. Where by default again this is the unit class. The British standard. Which is used to classify documentation. Or files or models. <coughs> and that allows one also to filter out files. Based on what their classification is. And then there's also the folder enforcement. You can do that from the files area as well. And then something else. The holding area. Control how documents are uploaded when non-conforming document names exist. And here I've enabled a holding area for non-conforming files. And what that means is, even if somebody does upload a file which does not have the correct file name, the manager of that team or whoever it is that manages that folder, the administrator, would be able to rename incoming files so that they do conform to the naming standard. So I've switched that on. <coughs> then you can also customize the standard. Because I wanted to mimic the British standard, I've customized the details over here to be alphanumeric, fixed length, three characters. Typically, the ISO standard allows anything from two to six, but I've decided to standardize that. That just helps when you do have a project to align all of the codes with each other, so it's easy to scroll your eyes down the page and to see which project, which file you're looking at. The originator. So... At the moment, you can see that I've only got the example code and then ourselves, MGFX, but you can also edit that. And you can add some of the company and there you can add the value, excuse me, ARC. And whichever company it is, you can then add that code. You can even give it a description if you'd like and save. That now becomes part of a drop-down. You can see it's a drop-down menu. So you can actually select that from a drop-down. Similarly with the volume and system, you would set this up. In my case, all volumes and systems. And again, you can edit that and add whichever values you'd like to the drop-down list. Same with the level and the location. The type of the file. This is familiar to us, or it should be familiar for us from the British standard. So we've got our M3s, 
an M2 is 2D, 3D model, M3, it's a typical sort of Revit model. The roll. So in this case, I've increased the roll to two digits, again to conform to the British standard. However, uh, on some of the newer projects that I've worked on, I'm taking the default of one. It just simplifies the, the coding. And then the number. And in this case, I used five. In the ISO, they sometimes use six. <coughs> so the idea is here that you can edit the naming standard and how it's supposed to apply. And then the status, you can see how it conforms to the British status over here. If you had to edit that, you'd also be able to add values. So if the status is for construction or for documentation, whichever status it is that you'd like. I, I like the British standard because it's quite an expansive standard, the revision. Again, you can edit and the classification. So by default, this is based on the unit class. And then once this has applied to a folder, you wouldn't be able to change that again. So you just have to remember to set this up before you apply it to a folder or a file structure. And if you're happy with all of that, then you can start using the protocol on your file naming structure. And you'll see how on the docs license lease me upload a file in this case a PDF onto the cloud. It will extract that file name. But of course under the new build license, when it extracts the sheets, they simplified the process. And so you'll see under the sheets that it would just have extracted the sheet number and the sheet name. So it extracts those from that PDF file and names it based on the sheet number and below that you can see the sheet name. Going back to the docs folder <coughs> and having a look at one specific file in the collaboration folder I've got the architectural model open in my Revit you will have some ability to see which fields you want to show by looking at the settings. So I've switched off the, I've just left the description on, the status and the, uh, the revision and the rest. That's my one criticism of Revit is that you can't see the description of the file within the Revit interface. So if you do work with files that are code based and you don't immediately know what it is, I would suggest that you have the documents page open on a web browser and your Revit at the same time. Note something very specific that the status is S01, the revision is P01, and the classification is a 3D model. Now, I, when I publish my Revit file, the version will of course increase. Not the revision, but the version of the file itself, the published model. And I will now continue to uh, publish this model. So on my publish settings I can set what I want to publish I would have obviously synchronized and then I'm going to just manage my cloud models and publish that to the cloud we're going to publish the architectural file which is the AX file there Right, so the architectural file is published and we're going to have a look at the file that's been uploaded onto the cloud. We can now update the status. Let's suppose that we've updated the status to an S1. We can alter the revision. This is all metadata on the file now. And the classification will stay the same. And let's see what happens to the version if we slip the version back. Let's see what happens to the status and the revision. So on the version, on the version history, we're going to go back to version 3.
And there we can see how the metadata now acts as a slip sheet. So it's taken S1 back to S0. If we make version 4, then notice that the S0 will switch back to S1. So that is what's known as slip sheeting and the metadata update appropriately. And so your previous versions will have the correct metadata displayed for the attributes that you might have defined within the project. If you had to use the wrong name to try and create a collaboration for Revit file, it will reject that name completely. And also if you upload a file and you may have used the wrong naming, then it will pick that up and it will flag it over here for instance. The role has been indicated by the wrong letter. So if you can't fix it immediately then upload it to the holding area. And after you've uploaded it to the holding area you can now go and either modify your naming standard to include something like the role where you could go and add another role in this case because two characters were used to, to define the role of the architect we just have to switch it out to the A but you can go and add whatever information is necessary to your naming standard to accommodate that file and so we can ultimately just see that we can go back to the holding area the document manager basically open that folder and correct the file. The last thing to do is also then to add the status, the revision and the classification. And we are looking at a 2D model here so that will be 55. And once we see that it accepts that name, we can then save the file to the folder without any further errors getting generated. There we can see the file is uploaded. And then lastly, we would add some description. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short demonstration on the naming standard on the platform. And remember, if you have any questions or you need assistance, please contact Micrographics so that we can assist you with that. Thank you and enjoy your week. Bye.